accepted by Nick Cassavetes, or at least I think that's how you pronounce his name. We are talking God is a Bullet. And this is adapted from a novel. Now, this is apparently based on a true story. And it's got a pretty good cast. Uh, Nicholas Costa Waldu, who you may know as Jamie Lannister from uh, Game of Thrones, probably butchered his name as well. Uh, you've got Micah Monroe, uh, January Jones, and a couple of other familiar faces as well. Now, this is a kind of um, action thriller, I guess you would say. It's important to note there are two cuts of this film. Um, there is a uh, two hour, 35 minute cut and a two hour cut. And I watched the shorter two hour cut. Um, so I'm basing my review of that cut of the movie. Now I understand the longer cut uh, has more kind of character moments, more plot development, things like this. So bear that in mind when we're watching this review. This is for the shorter version of the film. So the story here focuses on this um, small town cop um, whose daughter is kidnapped by a group of kind of satanic cult members and they um, effectively capture young people and indoctrinate them into their kind of like cult ultimately. This is how they kind of get members. And they also kind of murder this guy's like his ex-wife and her new husband and things like that. So this cop teams up with this ex-cult member, played by uh, Micah Monroe, and uh, they try to uh, track down this kind of cult and rescue his daughter, ultimately. Now, what will happen? You'll have to watch the movie and find out. So let's discuss what I think works in this movie. Now, it's quite a hard-hitting movie with some quite brutal violence in there. Um, now, again... I remind them, I'm talking about the, the shorter cuts. Um, so, I think part of this movie's strength, uh, at least from the version I have I watched, was the relationship between our two main characters, uh, Nicholas uh, Costa Waldo's uh, character of the cop, who is from a small town, a man of faith, and uh, his kind of travelling companion, who is this ex kind of cult member who for her own reasons kind of wants to kind of somewhat redeem herself, I suppose. And they're obviously from extremely different kind of world, different world views. But I really enjoyed the chemistry of these two actors. I think they were, they were very strong and had a great kind of believable relationship that you can kind of see grow through the movie. And I think that is the, is the heart of this movie. The film is also punctuated by, as I, as I mentioned, some quite graphic violence when we have these kind of um, confrontations with various different kind of cult or criminal elements within the movie. Uh, to the point where I was thinking, blimey, this, this guy has killed a lot of people. Our, our protagonist ends up killing quite a lot of people and he's meant to be a, like a cop. He's kind of not only, you know, he's not officially doing this effectively, but I was thinking, is this, you know, is he kind of going to pay for all this stuff, basically, but whatever. But yeah, it's kind of a, somewhat of a kind of a revenge tale to a certain degree. But there is there is a, a, some heart-hitting violence. I would say um, our cult members seem genuinely dangerous. I mean, they, they the leader of this kind of this cult seems to kind of execute his kind of um, his comrades who fail him with just kind of no second thought and, you know, no remorse. So he makes for a very kind of dangerous and kind of unpredictable kind of like figure. Um, so, you know, I, I, I appreciate that the, this kind of threat seems kind of quite genuine. I mean, they're all kind of done up like kind of Satanists, but we don't really see any kind of actual sort of uh, Satan worship service. But they could just be a biker gang, to be honest with you. Again, this might have been in the long and cut, so I don't know. But yeah, they see they, they they do seem kind of quite threatening, and you know there there's some there's some good dialogue moments in it. Um, you know, the whole kind of title, you know, comes down to this kind of conversation where uh, you know Mike and Monroe and and uh, the main characters having this conversation about their different beliefs and how it all comes down to ultimately the great decider, which is effectively a bullet or kind of like modern technology, modern arms and things like that. 
So there, there are some, uh, there's, there's some pretty good moments here. So let's discuss, let's talk to our discussion what doesn't work. Now again, some of this might be addressed in the longer cut of the video, but I haven't seen it, so I don't know if if this this some of these critiques may be, um, you know, in the longer cut. Um, I would say, like I've mentioned, I think our kind of our antagonists, this group of uh, Satanists. I mean, they've all got like inverted crosses and things like that. But I didn't really feel that the, the kind of cult kind of mentality, the cult aspect of this film, it felt very arbitrary because they didn't really do anything other than kind of like like what a kind of like ravaging band of bikers would do, if that makes sense. It, it seemed odd to have that aesthetic of these kind of Satanists, um, but we don't really ever see any like motivation about what's driving them, what their end game is and kind of what they want to do. They just seem to be out there kind of causing damage, but with without any type of context as to what they what they want outside of doing drug deals and things. So the kind of the, the satanic angle here, I think, is just put in to contrast with the the kind of like the the faith of our main character. But it doesn't really serve any purpose in the movie. Again, that could be in the in the longer car. I don't know. Um. The movies, even an, even this shorter cut is a longer, a bit of a longer film. But even then, I, I have to say, there, there, there are things here where I felt this movie skipped over pretty quick. The first act of the movie, where we see this kind of gang kidnap our, the, the young daughter, the kind of response to it, I felt was skipped over quite sort of quickly, if you ask me. And I, I didn't really feel it, it, it had a lot of establishment at the beginning of the film. So... Even that, even at the shorter runtime, the two-hour runtime, I still felt this movie actually was um, skipped over certain things. And you know, I would have actually liked to have seen seen a few more scenes at the beginning of the movie to establish uh, the kind of the relationships, the kind of like the, the, the kind of the, the through timeline and things like this. Things happen at kind of quite a quick pace through the movie. And if you wanted to kind of keep it at the same runtime, there are certain scenes later on in the film that. Um, you could, I think I feel would have been better to cut that didn't serve as much purpose but yeah for me this setup I felt a little quick and then as we kind of go through the movie I felt it it, it feels a little um, discombobulated in regard to its kind of plot progression again I suspect this might be because of the kind of the, the cuts um, of the of the kind of the, from the longer version to this kind of two hour cuts um, there's one or two instances where I would say uh, the kind of the gore Kind of, it's the kind of the CGI like body explosions and blood kind of portray the sort of realism, and it kind of looks a little kind of like CGI -y at times, which is what they obviously are clearly using. Um, so there's, there's kind of that. So it's it's uh, as it stands at the moment, this cut of the movie is an enjoyable film, and it's kind of some, I feel some good dialogue and stuff, but it doesn't feel um, like it totally fits together. Um, so I feel the, the cut of this film, the two hour cut certainly, I don't know if, if the, the longer cut would have made it any better, to be honest. I'm mean, assuming they cut this out for a reason, but uh, as it stands at the moment it feels slightly kind of incoherent, um, but still kind of quite a well acted and kind of hard hitting film um, that kind of, you know, details survivor's guilt it details kind of like you know stockholm syndrome things like this and the kind of the, these kind of like disregard for human life that some people end up having so it's worth a watch although i consider it, it does feel a little bit kind of all over the place so it's this is a six out of ten for me have you seen it what did you think of it please do leave me a comment and i shall look forward to you next time bye for now